Right here, right now, it's Artifacts, a show that brings the arts of the Twin Cities to you. On this edition, find out how John Heinen and his partners tuned up A440 Studios. Meet Jill Bernard and her rubber chicken. Find out about Teddy Mackey's six-part space saga. See clips from a film slam. Plus, Gina Filagenzi finds out about people's favorite art experiences. All this and more on Artifacts, November 1999. Here's your host, a guy who's thrown around his share of rubber chickens, Bill Lindsay. Public art, get ready for a whole lot more. But first, consultants, committees, public meetings with facilitators, master plans, and of course, implementation strategies. Why, this almost sounds like an industry. Most of us have heard about the light rail transit being planned for the Hiawatha Corridor in South Minneapolis. The Metropolitan Council hired a local organization, Forecast, to facilitate a public art program at stations along that route. It all starts with 10 to 15 community meetings to be held by early 2000. Meanwhile, Midtown Community Works, that's the organization coordinating efforts along the Midtown Greenway, they recently selected Freeman Whitehurst Group to consult on public art policy for that corridor. Freeman Whitehurst principles got started in Phoenix in the 1980s. Forecast also gets a taste of that contract as local contact for the team. Master plan, expected in about a year. And then the artist can get busy. Well, there's no need to wait for a plan for this month's artifacts. On our show this month, John Heinen from A440 Studios. Jill Bernard, she doesn't want us to hate her. Teddy Mackey has a story to tell, and we'll show you part of a film slam. And don't forget, we've got our roving reporter, Gina Filigenzi, this month talking with people about art experiences. I'll be back with John Heinen after this art fact about the arts and the Minnesota quality of life. We'll get to it in a moment. So. That's good. And welcome back. Always interesting to find out what Minnesotans think about the quality of life here in our good state. Well, first up, John Heinen is one of the folks making good sounds happen at A440 Studios. John, it's nice to have you here. Thank you. My pleasure. Thanks. Um, I discovered A440 Studios on the Art of World tour right. earlier this year, and I was in there kind of expecting to see mostly a bunch of artists doing things. Sure. And indeed, there are a bunch of artists in the Grain Belt Warehouse up there in Northeast Minneapolis. But there was your studio. For our folks here who are watching, tell us a little bit about A440 and how you guys got started. Okay. Well, basically, we're... Uh, a recording studio, full service. We do everything from, you know, tracking, uh, uh, you know, mixing, CD mastering, digital editing, uh, CD duplication, pretty much anything involving producing audio and music for okay. uh, either artists or, or commercial use. So kind of one-stop shop? I mean, they come in, right. can, they, can they start with a concept uh, and you guys will help them develop it or do they have to bring that in? Yeah, with? we usually will, you know, we'll help them as much as we can. We're not... Uh, you know, at this point, we're not doing a lot of uh, producing of people's records, and, mm -hmm. and uh, but you know, if they if they need assistance, which a lot of bands do, there's you yeah. know a lot of bands that are going in for the first time and whatnot. Sure. So we always help them out. Yeah. Any sense uh, in your business about how much of a mix there between the corporate and and sort of what I call the artistic, those bands that right. are living the dream? Right. Well, there's um, you know there's uh, as you know many bands in the Twin Cities here, and and uh, you know everybody is. Um, you know, pursuing <coughs> whatever it is that they're going after. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, as far as the, the, the corporate side of it, um, you know, we've done a fair amount of, of commercial music production too, you know, in the mm -hmm. way of jingles and, um, you know, instrumentals for 3M and that kind of thing. My but, hunch is that a lot of folks don't realize that, that the music industry the, and the sound industry by extension yeah. isn't just about what you're going to pick up at a music store. A lot of it has to do with internal communication out there in businesses and things like that. Right, yeah, definitely. There's a lot of that, especially in the Twin Cities here. There's a great deal of that uh, happening. Is that because there's a big corporate sector here and we've um, got our share of Fortune 500 companies? You right, yep, yeah. that is a lot of it. Are there some of those folks knocking on your door? Um, from time to time, uh, you know, we, we are, you know, we've done a fair amount of that and we will continue to, but we uh, tend to be more artist related. Is that because, right? Yeah, we're. Uh, you well, know, I know in a moment we're going to talk about a neat uh, website you've created that actually does help uh, promote some local singers. So we'll get right. to that in a minute. I want to find out a little bit more about how you started your company. I mean, you're not, it's not a sole proprietorship here. You've got a couple of partners right. involved? Right. Yep, I have two partners. Um, we just, you know, I, I've been, I'm a songer, uh, singer, songwriter. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, you know, through the years of pursuing my career and, you know, recording, working in other studios, 
um, I came up with this big idea of just having our own place to basically work on our own records. And um, so my key partner, John Hansen, uh, was in Florida at the time, and we were buying equipment and uh, yeah. had no idea what we were in for, but decided to, you know, put a studio together and. Um, so the business know, side of it is what you're talking about. You weren't quite yeah. sure <clears throat> all the hoops and hurdles that that implied. Right, right. We had yeah. no idea that we were going to get into something that uh, would turn into this. But um, so you know, it's uh, you know, after four years of building the business, I still am starting to inch my way into the studio to uh, work on my first record. But well, I would hope that you get a chance to <laughs> utilize this space for some right. of your own creative output right. and stuff. Like, what kind of music yeah. were you involved in yourself? Um, primarily pop, but I've, yeah. I've got my, you know, definitely my own sound. You know, yeah. I have a lot of influences by, you know, right. regular pop artists. But uh, Well, you were telling me before we sat down that uh, one of the things you all have been working on for about the last year is, a, is I guess, a new product, a new service, create a song? Right. Yep. Yeah. We, we came up with the idea, and there's, you know, as you know, the, the web is, uh, you Great know, there's access. all kinds of stuff happening out there, yeah. and a lot of, you know, it's a real new uh, frontier, you know, new right. playing field. But uh, there's, you know, over two million or, or more greeting sites. That's a very big thing on the web is free electronic greetings. and. Uh, uh, we came up with a way that we could actually take a song that is occasion based like say for a birthday or anniversary or a love song and uh, we have a name list of 2,000 names for each song so you can simply oh, wow. just pick a name off the list the name is sung into the song a few a few times and now, who uh, does the actual singing whose voice are they actually gonna um, well we have a number of local artists we're oh, really? working okay. with and that's that's really so you get some real talent involved yeah indeed we're using the best uh, talent so it's not like that phone series. voice like you no. know at the sound of the tone your <laughs> no. happy birthday Gary nope it's very real it's all professionally produced oh, that sounds wonderful yeah and that's the the first phase of it I mean we're uh, moving into the the second uh, stage which is going to be a, a greeting called uh, an express greeting basically where You'll have eight lines in a song, say a verse and a chorus, and uh, for each line you can hit a drop-down box that will bring you 10 or 15 other options. So you can kind of go and design the lyrics. Oh, yeah. Um, nice you know, exactly. there of opportunities. Right, yep. Yeah, it's uh, well, now, an interactive. Who, who, who do you expect is going to use that? Obviously friends and right. loved ones are going to send these things back and forth. Right. Is there some chance here for um, business communication or anything? Most definitely, yep. We're developing uh, a site that will be uh, focusing on corporate greetings. Um, Wow. They may use them for, uh, you know, a client thank you or for an inner office uh, thank you or promotion or, uh, you know, something well, of that let's, sort. I, I hope you have it in your head. Let's rattle off uh, at least that website. And I know we have another one for the, for the business as well. Right, for the studio. Well, if you'll rattle them off, we'll get them up on the screen and okay. folks can uh, jot them down. Okay, well, www.createasong.com. Create a song is all one word. All so. one word, yep. Okay. Yep. So people can uh, click into that. And yep. what do they see when they get that up on their screen? Um, well, it gives you a little description of what mm -hmm. the site does. Um, you can go in uh, right there through one link and, and uh, go to the song page, which uh, you know gives you you can sample all the songs that right. we have available and. Um, a lot of great talent on the on the site right now. That's and, great. Uh, and so it's yeah. a nice way to promote local artists. Yeah, we have some very long term plans with the site. Yeah. Um, you know, as much as we will focus on you know the the standards like the happy birthday and mm -hmm. songs that are uh, more familiar, but we are mixing in a fair amount of original material, and we'll be using this site to uh, promote local artists and. Uh, also, artists that will be on our record label. And next by the year. nature of it, I mean that's international. Very much. I mean, so. people would be calling in from so. Tanzania if they want yeah. to make use of this. Yeah, and it's incredible. I mean, for me as a writer, even uh, you know, which is really my that's my my first love, and uh, to have a song on the website right now that is reaching that many people is just incredible. Very it's, cool. Yeah, it's a lot. Very of fun. cool. Speaking of the industry that you're in, um, and from my vantage, it seems pretty healthy these days. Yeah. Maybe bespeaks a good economy. What's your take on how the industry you're in is doing here in the Twin Cities? I mean, you're in it, and I just look at it. Yeah. Healthy? Uh, are there big changes going on? Uh, um, you know, it seems to be on somewhat of an upswing as far as uh, the amount of artists that are out there. This city has so much talent. It's just yeah. uh, that's one thing that's really amazed me as I've started to talk to and contact a lot of these uh, singers and writers for, for the Create a Song project. Um, there's just a huge amount of talent here, and, and uh, are they a little surprised and happy that, that they get the call? I mean, if if someone called me and said, you know, we got this thing now on the web, 
that would not have occurred to me. So yeah. to me, it'd be a new right. deal. Yeah, it is, and and everybody's been really, uh, you know, they share the excitement, yeah. and you know, everybody's right in there. And I suppose they're in different styles. I mean, you get someone that can do it bluesy, someone maybe more exactly. jazzy, more pop, whatever. Right, right, Very exactly. Cool. We've got some artists like Gwen Matthews and George Faber, um, Scott Miller, um, just a number of you know uh, really talented people, and Great. Um, you know we're continuing to put our feelers out for other artists right. locally that want to take part in it. Well, if if it's if it's well locally, and I know we kind of sit here in the upper Midwest, and it's kind of a cocoon in a way, and things are going pretty well. I mean, we've got, as you say, a lot of talent. We got folks like yourselves who are sort of adding value to what is here. Right. How does how does the Metropolitan Twin Cities, Minnesota? tie in with uh, the industry nationally? I mean, everybody talks about Los Angeles, obviously, but sure. there are other centers. Are we sure. holding our own? Well, yeah, I think we always have, and obviously the artist has a lot to do with that, and, you know, right. Jam and Lewis with the things that they've done over the years. And um, But, you know, it's the thing that really separates us from the East and West Coast is the fact that the record labels are really, you know, grounded in those two cities, and it's... Uh, yeah that's really where things are are happening and it makes it a little tougher for the artist to uh, mm -hmm. you know reach them and and uh, but although there's a lot of people you know coming through this town on a regular basis yeah, that are you know certainly looking for the next big thing sure. so. well I know in some other artistic fields I mean that the depth here in the Twin Cities is enough that they don't have to leave to make a career and and I suppose right. you and the folks at A440 are living proof of that as well you don't have sure. to take your dream and say the only place I can realize this is out in, in Los Angeles or something. Right, yeah. In fact, it can be uh, a lot tougher to do it out there, you know. Because everybody's sort of, they say if you tilted the United States, it all kind of shake down towards Los Angeles right. for some of these industries. Right, so. yeah. And it's, you know, I've known many artists that have gone out there with that uh, yeah. dream, and you, you've, you know, realize the reality of it very soon when you get out there, that it's, yeah. uh, you know, it's very competitive and it's not easy to break through. A lot through, of folks bounce back. I know in Nashville, too, <clears> people try and hit that. And they, right. You know, maybe have their hit and they come back and sure. got a long medley all of a sudden. Right. Like, <laughs> exactly. A440, I've been meaning to ask you ever since I first met you. Yeah. Is that a setting? What, what, <laughs> what is A440? Or? It's actually, um, it's the key of A, um, which is uh, oh. 440 cycles per second is, is uh, cool. the key of A. So that's all right. it's a Well, you learn thing. something every day, folks, yep. and <laughs> that's what I learned today. So I wondered. I thought it was maybe something on a dial. So okay. <laughs> I yep. didn't know it's setting for something. Right. Um, you're up at the Green Belt Brewery Complex in one of the right. warehouses. Mm -hmm. How did you find that, and what was it that drew you to that area? Well, actually, a friend of mine uh, who's also a studio owner brought me in there and uh, convinced me that day that, uh, you know, you're cutting a check for this space. This is the best space in town. And, uh, you know, after being there for four years, I have to agree, it's a great place to be. There's uh, <clears throat> just great energy in the building. A yeah. uh, little have, uh, interaction amongst the creative folks yes, there? Yes, very much so. I mean, it's yeah. just full of great people. Um, and, you know, everybody is really, you know, as we were a startup company, everybody was kind of coming in at that same level. And uh, so it's been really fun to just kind of, you know, yeah. share that excitement as we all kind of move up. And, uh, Sounds good. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we've got just a moment left. Any new plans, any new uh, projects that A440 is working on? Well, um, we've got a lot of stuff going on there for sure. Yeah. Um, too many things to mention probably in the time we have. A lot of have, projects. On the right, um, but Create a Song really is our, our uh, you know, big focus right now. Very um, cool. We have a, uh, a lot of time and effort. We've got a great team together for, uh, for yeah. that project. And uh, so, you know, I just urge people to keep their eye on the website. And, and that uh, website address again is? It is www.createasong.com. Okay. Yeah. Well, tune in, folks. Check it out. That sounds good. John Heinen, thanks. Thank you very much. Pleasure to have you on here. Thank you. Learn a little bit more about your studios. Well, coming up, we'll have our monthly news bits feature, but we'll do that right after Gina Filigenzi talks with people about their best art experience. Stay tuned. Thanks, Phil. I'm standing on Central Avenue in Northeast Minneapolis on a very chilly November day, and I'm asking people what their best, most memorable art experiences are. Let's go to work. What is your favorite art experience? Okay, I like theater and uh, like Shakespeare, for example. What is your most memorable art experience? Wow, uh, probably the Louvre in Paris, I would have to say. Just seeing everything. <laughs> What's your favorite art experience? I would have to say um, probably about all the movies about William Shakespeare. What is your most memorable art experience? Oh, gee. <laughs> I really don't like art that much. What is your most memorable art experience? My most memorable, the uh, Minneapolis Institute of Art. What is your favorite art experience? 
Uh, the Salvador Dali Museum in Figueres, Spain was my most uh, memorable artistic experience, I think. What is your most memorable art experience? I don't know. Sorry. What is your most memorable art experience? <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> what is your favorite art experience? Art experience? Oh, well, uh, well, let me see now. My favorite art experience. Well, uh, I guess it's been, I'm a cab driver, you know, and uh, when I had an old checker cab, you know, and uh, they came out and took a picture of me on the billboard there. You know, I guess that's about my favorite. What is your most memorable art experience? The Louvre in France, Paris, France. It was incredible. What's my favorite art experience? It would have to be a front row of the Prince concert. It rocked. That's another day of art on the streets of Minneapolis, and there's your food for thought. I'm Gina Filagenzi. Back to you, Phil. Well, thanks, Gina. Now for the news bits here on Artifacts. She's 19 years old, she has Down syndrome, and she's an award-winning artist. Cherry Moore paints portraits and views of life in Derbyshire, England, realizing success both critically and commercially. This is a nice story. The BBC quoted her as saying, it's relaxing, fun, and helps me stay calm. Now, last month, we reported the U.S. Senate's support for an increase in funding for the National Endowment for the Arts. In conference committee uh, early in October, however, the House Republican leadership insisted that the $5 million increase recommended by the Senate be left out. A final bill without the extra money for the NEA was expected to be signed by President Clinton later in October. Now, for those of you who remember, in May of 1998, we reported on the so-called Mozart effect. This is a suggested link between intelligence and listening to classical music. Baby Mozart CDs became popular, promotional campaigns promised inspiration and IQ improvement, and former Governor uh, Zell Miller in Georgia wanted every baby in the Peach State to have a classical music album given to them at birth. Now inevitably there's been an effort to debunk this claim. A Harvard neuropsychologist, Christopher Shabris, analyzed 16 research studies on the subject and he concluded that basically the effect is statistically insignificant. And now, of course, an academic debate is underway nationwide. Part of his skepticism stems from wondering why 19th century music is key to this phenomenon. Why not show tunes or some other genre? And that's the news bits for November 1999. I'll be back with Jill Bernard right after this art quote from Edna Ferber. Well, welcome back. You are viewing Artifacts, and I'm Phil Lindsay. My next guest is Jill Bernard, and she's heading up an event called Don't Hate Us Because We're Funny. It's a benefit, and it's about working against violence and hate crimes. Sounds kind of serious, Jill. Yeah. Yeah, but it's, you guys are funny. Yes. Now, first of all, you are involved with the comedy sports outfit down near Hennepin Avenue yes. South. Let's start with that, and then we'll talk about this benefit. Comedy sports, what goes on there? It's uh, two teams of improvisational athletes competing in head-to-head -head competition for points and laughs. Okay, and who um, gives them the points? The audience? Well, there's a referee. It's oh. really, it, it is kind of like a sport, except the games mm -hmm. aren't athletic games, they're theater yeah. games. Um, and you call them improvisational ath athletes? Athletes. Athletes? It's cute, it's actors and athletes. Oh, okay. Athletes. It's Some consultant probably came up with Oh, that. yeah, I'm sure. Oh, okay, so anyhow, there, so there's actually competition. I mean, are there penalties? There are fouls. There um, are fouls, like yes. bad puns. Well, that there's uh, mm, there's that. <laughs> um, we have a foul we call the groaner foul, which is if you say something so terrible that it makes the whole audience groan. Oh, all right. You receive a foul. You have to apologize, or you could lose a point. And um, so there are consequences. I yes. mean, you actually lose a point. Oh yes. Oh all yes. Right. You could lose a point. You could have any kind of penalty the referee can think up. Oh, so it could get like medical. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> So there's real competition here, and how do these folks uh, come up with like their topics and their conversation? I mean, what is it they're improving on? Audience suggestions. Oh, all right. We just 
come out to the audience and we ask them for anything, anything that they're thinking of can become the basis of a scene. Okay, so every single time this happens, it's new, it's fresh. You're, oh, you're yeah. not going, I mean, you can go in night after night and see something different. True. Well, that True. sounds pretty cool. Never the same show twice. Never dull. Mm -mm. Um, how big are the teams? Uh, three or four people. Okay. And you're, one, you some, you're on one of the teams sometimes? Yes. Okay. Yes. So that's comedy sports. But there's also training that goes on there, and you have a big hand in that. Yes, we do have workshops uh, for anybody from any age, really. We, our youngest student ever was 13, and our oldest was 62. So, really? Yeah, it runs the gamut. And, um, and why are they there? Why do they, I mean, is this a dream that a lot of people have? They say, I really yeah. want to be funny, or I am funny, but I've never been in front of an audience. It, the impulse is... is it varied. Yeah. Some people uh, just want to have fun. Other people. Well, that's good. That's healthy. Yeah. Other okay. people want to improve their public speaking skills or just be more comfortable around people. Um, some people oh. do have aspirations of someday okay. being on stage. Too. But that second one sounds kind of like a real practical thing. It's like, well, you know, I got to give speeches. I, I lead meetings, and I want to be a little more relaxed. Oh, that's a great application. Oh, cool. We go into corporations all the time and do workshops with them oh. just to get them more comfortable. Yeah. And you, when you say you help, them, you train them, what is it you train them? I mean, well, you give them a punchline, you tell them work up. To <laughs> what do you actually do for these folks? We play games, but each of the game has a focus to it. And the focus ends up making you stronger in some area. I mean, even though improv, I mean, there's no lines to memorize. There yeah. are skills that you can build on. Everyone's yeah. always like, well, how can you teach improv? You don't really teach it. You teach the skills that will make you better at handling new situations. Kind of a mindset has yes. to be there. So I used to work with a fellow who was trained in Commedia dell'arte, and he would bring to our performance what he called Lazzi, just sort of yes. standard shtick, basically, that you could employ when needed, as needed, and sometimes you build off of it, sometimes it'd just be there as a fail-safe and you could fall back on yes. it. Yes, that's the birth of improv comedy. Is that true? Yes. Doesn't it sound like I know what I'm talking about? <laughs> that's pretty, that's a, well, that's good. How long have you been doing improv comedy? About five years. Okay. I started with comedy sports five years ago. Here in town? Yes. And you're not originally from here? No, I'm from Downers Grove, Illinois. Downers Grove, Illinois? Yes. Isn't that where Emil Phillips is from? Yes. Yeah. He is our, our native son. Okay. He's, he was cool. Oh, yeah. I haven't seen him lately, though. No. Okay. Not so so what brought you from Downers Grove, or were there stops in between, and, and then you hit comedy sports in South Minneapolis? I, uh, I went to college in Iowa at a very small school in Cedar Rapids. And... Um, I wanted a bigger school, and you can't get any You mean bigger. you didn't go to the big school in Cedar Rapids? No. You went to the little school the in Cedar Rapids. The little tiny school okay. in Cedar Rapids. So you get to Cedar Rapids, and then what? You just kept hearing the call? Yes. North. Go north. Go north. Oh, that was, it must have been summer. Yes. Yeah? <laughs> it was August. It was okay, but what, you came intentionally to do comedy? Uh, I went to the University of Minnesota. Okay, that's the big school yes. between the two For cities. For contrast. Yeah. Yeah. I went to the small school, then I, that was too small, went okay. to the really big school. And then uh, I met a friend, Mikey Heinrich, and uh, he was in comedy sports and said, hey, come on, So he's audition. one of the uh, athletes. Yes. I get it right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I memorized the line. Whee! Okay, so you went, did you have any inkling that you were funny and that you could handle this, or was this just, what was your first well, time I, on stage like? I am trained in, in theater. I was oh. a theater major at the University of Minnesota, mm -hmm. so I... I I'm comfortable on stage, but yeah. the thing I don't like is memorizing lines. Hey, I'm with you on that. Yeah. Oh, that's tough. Oh. So here's this perfect outlet. I didn't yeah. even know that there was a... Because basically on stage in a play, I would forget my lines and just start talking. I didn't realize there was a whole other <laughs> branch of theater all about that. Now, was this like a solo show, or did the other actors get a little miffed oh, when yeah, Jill's forgetting lines? Yeah, mostly it was miffing. And, I mean, if you're yeah. Desdemona and you forget a line, that... That sword might be coming your way sooner than later. Yeah. Wow. So this works for you, the improv. Yes. And there's also a big difference, and most of you just probably know this, but there's a huge difference between theater with that fourth wall, where there's a, an imaginary uh, distance between yourself as an actor and the audience and the improv, because you're, by definition, you're working with the yes. audience. They're, in a sense, part of the show. Yes. With comedy. Yes. Yeah. You like that part, too? Oh, I love it, because I really feel like it's, it's a liaison. For some people, theater is so intimidating, and it doesn't, it seems to me like theater has become so elitist. But at our theater, you know, high school kids come, yeah. grandmas come, everybody comes, and they feel completely comfortable because it is really more like a communication, a two-way street. Yeah. Do they ever leave you behind? I mean, did the audience, did the, the high school kids ever start talking to the grandmas and start <laughs> coming back and forth or anything? You guys just take a, take a that. break? <laughs> well, now, let's, let's, and you brought, 
is this a regular prop, or you just bring this because I missed work, working with the rubber chicken? I, I brought it just for you. Thanks, Jill. Bill. Thanks. I, uh, is this a special regular member of anything? Is this um, just a prop that you haul out as needed? Or? I, I'm afraid this particular chicken has, has been down a member of the Impossible's pants. So oh, you, you my not, word. You might not want to touch it. So. Oh, my word. Now, you mentioned the Impossible's. Yes. Which is a wonderful segue from wherever <laughs> this poor thing has been. Uh, the Impossible is uh, an improv troupe? Yes. Okay, tell um, us about that. Well, the Scrimshaw brothers are our two local comedians. They're actual brothers, too. Named Scrimshaw? Yes. They were just born with a funny name. They couldn't do anything else. I'd try and live that up. I know. Okay. So uh, they founded this, this group, the Impossibles, and we perform regularly as part of Look Ma No Pants. Which is a variety show. The first Wait a minute, you said I know. there were pants. The irony. <laughs> the irony. There are pants. So the pants have been ironied. Yes. Okay, so that would oh. be a groaner. Yes, I lose a point, mm, right? Mm, okay. Yes. So anyhow, uh, say that again, no pants? Look ma, no pants. That's the name of the show. Yes. Not the name of the act. Right. The the it's a variety show, and the Impossibles oh. perform. We're the house improv troupe at Look ma, no pants. Where is that? At the Phoenix Playhouse, the first Saturday oh. of every month. Okay, so that's quite apart from comedy sports. Yes. So you're out and about making a living doing comedy? Yes. Okay. And then comedy sports happens when? Uh, Fridays and Saturdays. Okay. At 8 and 10.30. You had a very interesting story to tell about the, phys the building that this is in now. Comedy sports is located where? At 28th and Hennepin. Just yeah, a little bit east of Hennepin on 28th. Right. And I was telling you, well, that, you know, once upon a time, there were a bunch of Twin Cities comedians that started the comedy cabaret over there. And you said, yeah, but do you know how that building first started and what was it? It was a trolley turnaround back when there were streetcars in Minneapolis. A and it's neat because you can still see it. The doorway is this huge doorway because that's where the cars went. And yeah. you can see the circle built into the concrete where they For the round the table yeah. deal. That is so cool. A good reason in itself to go over to comedy sports. Yes, it's hysterical. It's hysterical. <laughs> now, you, I don't want to miss in our interview here, um, this big benefit you guys are working on. Um, first of all, name it, and then tell us a little bit about it. Don't hate us because we're funny. Uh -huh. um, it's actually a benefit against hate crimes and violence that was started. A friend of ours in New York, Stuart Nager, was watching TV, and it, a, a guy had just shot up the Jewish Community Center somewhere oh, this in is Cal out in Los yeah. Angeles or somewhere. Yeah. yeah, that was horrible. And he, but the expression on the guy's face was so smug, just almost the, proud of himself. The, the guy the on perp. the yes, yeah, that Stewart was was struck by it, and yeah. he and he had to do something. He felt compelled to do something, so he gets on the internet. Yeah. He sends out a call to all the improv theater community across the country, and so there are going to be shows going on the weekend of November 11th, all over the country, Okay. Um, just based off Stewart's reaction to, and so the, idea to is the obviously whole chain of events, the, yeah. the whole violence. Well, I know in your, um, in your press release about it, you were talking about the fact that, you know, th they've been shooting up churches, they've been shooting up uh, corporate headquarters, yes. schools, and you, and you said something actually rather poignant. This is, these are places where folks like you tend to perform. Yes, we were going into, well, that struck me. I was going into a school to perform, and I thought, Wow, somebody could walk yeah. in here with a shotgun tomorrow, yeah. and we're performing here tonight. It was just, yeah. Uh, so that kind of motivated you to say uh, you'll take a shot. Now you're leading up the effort. You're, you're yes, the you're, Minneapolis right. branch. Um, and it's happening when and where? I think you mentioned when. November. It's November 11th, yep. 8 o'clock at the Comedy Sports Theater at 28th and Hennepin. Okay, and proceeds go to some good causes. Um, Harriet Tubman Center and Turn Off the Violence. Yeah, now tell me about Turn Off the Violence. The Harriet Tubman Center isn't too far away from you, actually. Right, the 31st right, neighbors. Street near Nicollet there. <laughs> yes. um, and that's a good facility that's been doing a lot of good work for about a generation. But uh, Turn Off the Violence, that's uh, oriented what, with the schools? Um, yes, it was started by two friends who uh, put together school programs and packages. What I like about them is they're not just censors. They're not saying, turn off the TV. It's too violent. Yeah. Go out, ban NBC. They're not saying that. They're saying, look, why don't you sit down with your children, talk to them about what they're watching, talk to them about what happens to them at school. And they provide all kinds of information to schools and parents. Yeah. And, so they're talking about getting the engaged. The community group, right. Not, not some kind of abstract thing where, right. oh, that's a bad thing. They, they're getting engaged. Yes. Well, a couple more things. Do you have some partners from the local comedy scene working on this Yes. With you? It's going to be a really exciting chance to see a whole bunch of improv at once. You get to see the Brave New Workshop student team, She, okay. which is part of their Six Ring Circus. Um, you get to see Stevie Ray's uh, improv theater. Yep. Us, 
and The Impossibles. Which is the so, group you're part of? Yes. Okay. So, and we're just running out of time, but I want to make sure if people want to call and get more information, there's a phone number for this big event? Yes, 612-870-1230. And that happens to be over at Comedy Sports. Right. But Great. They're taking reservations that for the event. Good. Jill Bernard, thank you very much. Thanks, and thanks for bringing no Mr. Problem. Chicken. No problem. Well, later up in the show, we're going to be bringing film and photography to life at a film slam. But our next guest is storyteller and filmmaker Teddy Mackey. Let's look at a clip from a working copy of his current film project. This is Hantavanos, a planet located on the outskirts of the Phantolian solar system. This world is currently being ruled by a young tyrant, Oricon. His father, Hasafu, is lord of the Phantolian system. He's placed Oricon as key ruler over the people of Hantavanos as a test of will in the art of kingship. Oricon has been cursed with sadness by his father as an act of conditioning. He plans to curse the people of Hantavanos with the same disease. What lies before you is an account of Oricon's story and the people of Hantavanos. I cry. I can take no more of this. You've locked me inside a most horrible state. Why must you do this, father? Stay true, my son. The ruler has patience, a trait which you have yet to learn. Father, please. I cannot handle these burdens. You've chosen me to rule over a world that feeds our pleasure. It is too painful for me to watch. Keep your ground, son. Before long I will be gone and you will take my throne as the leader of the whole Fentolian star system. You must be ready for this task. Before long. Before long. That means an eternity in my mind. Silence! I will no longer listen to you, please, Oracon. This is what I told you to do. Now go and do it! When the time is right, you may return home. Until then, rule this planet, Hantavanos. Continue this act of sadness and complete this test. Three, two, and yeah, my, my cousin was there. Oh, all right. <laughs> Well, now, what you just saw is, is part of the work, uh, kind of a preview of something that Teddy Mackey is working on. Teddy Mackey is a storyteller. He has worked in photography, and he's now working on a film project. In fact, a very big film project. Teddy, nice to have you on the show. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, and actually, your photography continues. Um, uh, and that's just something that you, you started out in photography? Yep, I started out in photography about nine years ago. Okay. Uh, my dad's a photographer. He, he got me into it, and I started working at the Minnesota Daily. And um, work I heard the about city some pages. Good shots you had uh, for the daily. Oh, thank you. And some folks uh, saw your work there, and yeah, I worked there for about two and a half years, yeah. and then worked at the Star Tribune and I internship, and um, doing the city pages freelance, kind of on and off for the past five years. And you were telling me that for one of the October editions, uh, you actually got the shot uh, for a cover story that City Pages. Uh, actually, did. November third. Oh, early November then. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Next week it's going to yeah. be on, cool. and uh, it's about six photographs from the Sun Country Northwest Airlines. Kind of dispute. The Sun Country is trying to compete oh, with them. Right. Um, They're trying to, to get, well, elbow to get their power. way into yeah, the local uh, exactly. airplane business and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Great. Mm -hmm. So you were out, on, out at the, out at the airport. Yeah. airport? Yeah, two days in a row. <laughs> All right. Whoa. Cool. So, what, well, they fun. strap you on a wing and take <laughs> off with you? I or wish. Yeah. yeah, that'd be fun. <laughs> See, now that's a professional photographer. I wish they would do that. <laughs> you'd be willing to do that. But now you've got a, a pretty big project coming up. And why don't we just start out by telling people what they just saw about a two minute clip from uh, what something, a work in process? Okay, yeah, it was a preview of Relinquishing Hand Tavanos. Um, the film is a seven-minute preview, and it was shot over a span of seven months. And when I was shooting it, I had no idea what I was going to shoot. I was just sort of doing documentary photography and just sort of kind of getting some small scene ideas. Yeah. And from that short film, this big feature project kind of came about. Like I started seeing how the images sort of flowed together and then yeah. the idea of doing something on a different world. 
um, kind of happened. It was definitely attention getting. I mean, just graphically, just the, the images. And then there was, I think, some pulsing music that came on mm -hmm. and then some uh, pulsing uh, high contrast kind of images. Yeah. Yeah. Do you tend to keep that sort of uh, feeling throughout? Well, so far, I mean, I made two, two one ten minute film, one seven minute film, and both of them were kind of made almost like a music video. Like this one is sort of played like a music video. Yeah. And um, the, this feature is going to have those sort of innuendos throughout the film, but it's also like a, a basic scene idea too. You mm -hmm. know, where we're cr cross shotting and, and just talking, just dialogue. But that's also intermixed with some upbeat kind of. Yeah. music that people can dance to while they're watching it. I would describe uh, the technique as a fairly aggressive, successful way to get the uh, viewer's attention, in my opinion. Are you trying to do Thank that? You. Are, you, yeah. are you competing, <laughs> though? I mean, there's a lot of stuff that's getting pumped out there. I mean, you mentioned right. music videos, right. and television obviously just keeps pouring stuff out, and Hollywood keeps just putting hit after hit out in front of us. Right. Is, is that a big consideration for a, a, any filmmaker, to just try and get people's attention? Definitely. That's yeah. what film is. I mean, film, film uh, can be made and people can just sort of pause it, press pause. Yeah. But the, like my goal is, is for them not to be able to press pause, you know, yeah. to, to sit down and watch a story. And if they turn it off, it's a really big deal instead of, oh, I got to you know, go to the kitchen and get my milk right. or whatever. Well, um, yeah, in just the two minutes we saw, and this is, this is kind of what I was driving at, you, the, the viewer would have to uh, be pretty decisive to say, I'm going to skip that. I mean, there's, it draws your attention. Right. You want to see more there. Right, yeah. Uh, unlike some things that tend to be more conventional, I guess, that I, you keep seeing, that you can say, well, I, I could already give you the chapter and verse and where this is going. Yeah. So that's yeah. good. It's, it's kind of like um, I work at the Jungle Theater, and, and Bane Belke, he's the director there, and his whole idea of a set is to not waste even you know, a centimeter of space yeah. where everything should, you know, the, the viewer's eye can move around the whole time. Right. So they're never bored, you know, whether they're looking at the characters yeah. or the set. And it's kind of the same way in film. Like your shots, you know, they can never be lacking, never can be lacking in any way. Well, I um, hear that, but I got to just say, a lot of the stuff I'm seeing coming out of Hollywood, and I'm not trying to compare them or maybe I'm trying to contrast them with what you're talking about, but I don't see a lot of that. I see a lot of stuff that's basically formatted now so they can go into different uh, platforms, you know, into video, right. onto television, onto the big screen. And so they're losing a lot of what I would describe as the visual integrity of what more classic filmmakers used to do, where they would compose shot by shot. Mm -hmm. So I don't see a lot of that happen coming yeah. out of Hollywood. Well, it's kind of, Hollywood is becoming a, a sort of a formula, too. Yeah. Um, you can go out to the theater and you can see a basic film and you're getting like the basic ideas yeah. of that. Mind you, like that's been, d been done for almost a hundred years, right. you know, since narrative film. Right. But um, the Hollywood has sort of composed these boundaries, whereas that's why independent film, they can tell some of the same stories, but they tell it in this fresh and, you know, new, yeah, exciting way. Yeah, a little way. edgier, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. breaking through. Yeah. What is your story about? Um, Relinquishing Hentavanos is, it's like the first of six stories. So far, there might be more oh after God. this, but um, I started writing um, the sixth, story, the last story, um, a few years ago, and it just I kind of trickled down five stories because I kept writing these stories and uh, visually and just kind of my own knowledge of filmmaking, I couldn't create those, couldn't put that on film yet. Technically, yeah, technically, yeah. Um, and so I just kept working my way down until I could tell a story uh, with the knowledge that I have now and, and go from there. And also, it's like the first introduction of this character, Oricon. Um, and Oricon is a Fantolian. And um, these films, like Relinquishing Han Tavanos, uh, The Tunnel, An, An Unknown Present, and um, there's one called Christ and one called Lin Kwan. And they all take place in this Fantolian star system, which is this place that's not about time, it's not about place or anything like that, that we know of. Um, it's just sort of a, almost like a parallel universe. Um, but the people are human. Um, you know, they do have some of the traits that we have. Um, and they care about you know, a lot of the same things that we care about. For a moment, I thought you were describing City Hall. No, you're talking about this <laughs> other star system yeah, here. Okay, yeah. all right. And um, Relinquishing Hantavanos, this story is about happiness. Um, Oricon is, in our age, about 24 years old. Your age? Yeah, my age, I I'm guess. I'm old yeah. enough to be my your generation. really, really older brother, so, so be cool. And he's, he's sent by his father to rule this small planet, yeah. which is f way out on the outskirts. And he curses his son with sadness. Um, and he tells his son, if you, you know, if you can complete this test of ruling this planet and you know, survive this sadness, then you'll be that much closer to ruling the star system. But Oricon is fed up with that. He said, I, ca I can't do this. I can't Nothing live happened. my life you know, with having no happiness. Yeah. And so and what, he tries to, what he does is he steals the people's memories of pleasure. So he's kind of creating, the, making this planet into what his insides look like. 
Wow. And um, sooner or later, the planet, people of the planet, Acralius, um, finds out what has happened. Um, and he finds, he finds out through a mask, because Oricon steals these memories, places it in a mask, so that whenever he wants to, he can go in his closet or whatever you want to say, and put on the mask and see pleasure. But he's the only one that can see pleasure. Um, and, and the mask gets lost and it's found, and then sooner or later progresses onto this thing where the whole planet figures, figures out what happened. Wow, I see some real mythical elements here. Definitely. Kind of the prodigal yeah. who's been sent out to learn something by the father, comes back, has to challenge that. I love the mask yeah, as, a, a, as, a, as a metaphor, as a technique. It's a really, kind of ties really Now, who are you working with here? You're, you're, you're filming, uh, you're in the Twin Cities. Mm -hmm. where, um, where are you filming and who are you working with? Well, the, the, we've got about 30 locations exterior. Wow. And then I'm still in the search for a studio space. I have one studio space that I could use for probably about six scenes. Mm -hmm. But nothing that's like, you know, set. Yeah. And then it's just, uh, it's all in Minneapolis and St. Paul and then up in Duluth. Oh, all right. Um, and then so the interior stuff is just whatever, um, yeah. some houses, you know, some hallways. Right. Uh, stuff like that. And then there's parts where when the characters put on the mask, um, it happens four times in the film. And those are like a separate movie in, in themselves. Um, okay. When they put on the mask and they see their pleasure, they, they see their past. Yeah. It's like a five minute short movie about happiness and that's going to, and then I'm going to film that all over the country. Uh, I want to take go on a road trip and just go around and, Why, nice. and, and you know, I guess yeah. find people who are happy. <laughs> <laughs> well, good luck. I, Downers yeah. Grove, Illinois, apparently, and uh, mm -hmm. there are a few out and around. Yeah, exactly. uh, this sounds like a big project. How, uh, how long a uh, time scale do you see this uh, um, occurring in? This one in particular, it's almost going on a year. Wow. Um, January, and I, I just started shooting actually yesterday. Um, oh. for it and so okay. yeah it's been the planning of it's gone on for about a year and yeah. the goal to have it finished is August of 2000. Aug well okay yeah. well that yeah. sounds pretty good. So. One of the things I'd like to do with you is uh, if you wouldn't mind come back once in a while mm -hmm. and give us an update on your project. Definitely. Because I yeah. think it'd be very interesting to see how it's progressing both sort of artistically the content and to some extent, the logistics and the technical side of yeah, it, you know, what challenges you've been finding and something. Like You're working with local actors? Yep, I would that's, that's another exciting thing, is everybody so far is willing to work for free. <laughs> and so, and most of the actors are theater actors right. that I've found through the jungle and just, yeah. you know, sort of however. Um, and there's about 13 characters in the film. And um, also in the past few weeks, I've connected with a uh, kind of an ambient electronica type band that is willing oh. to um, put their music to my film and perhaps even create new music for the movie. And so... Oh, um, well, that's cool. Yeah, and so that's, that'd be two, music, two uh, musicians, mm -hmm. and another band that, that is willing to create for this movie. Therefore, like, we'll probably have like, an original soundtrack. Excellent. Which would be yeah, super yeah. cool. Very nice. Um, uh, now, would you incorporate the, the musicians in any way in front of the camera, or would if they wanted to, yeah, because I mean, yeah, so, that could work in the yeah. dimension of, of the story. Definitely. You're telling. Well, there's the last scene in the film. I, I want to get as many people as I can. If I I could have 200 people, yeah. it's the first time that we really see the population of the planet. Oh. Um, so you need so a lot maybe of they could be be in there. Tons of extras. Yeah. Oh, so maybe some oh. viewers could give a call oh, to. Oh, definitely. Uh, definitely. Actually, you have a production company. Uh -huh. Small and one. That's but, yeah. <laughs> That's right. But that counts. I mean, yeah. you know, once upon a time, George Lucas was just looking in a cup of coffee yeah, and he said, I've got an idea. <laughs> What's the name of your company and how can people get in touch? It's Private Eye Pictures. And um, right now we're in St. Paul mm -hmm. and I'm moving to Minneapolis um, on December 1st. Okay. But for the month of November, anyhow, people could call yep, a certain at, phone number? That's 651 290 0357. Okay, we'll get that up on the screen. And as our viewers know, if they've seen something on the show and they want to find out more, they can always call our hotline and we could route them over here to Private Eye. Private Pri Eye Pictures. Pictures, yeah. okay. And there's every, every time something new happens with the film, the message is updated. So. Oh, okay, so you could literally call in and see what's happening. Mm -hmm. Well, that's mm -hmm. pretty good. Uh, we have just a minute left, but I wanted to ask you biggest challenge. I mean, you've got a great vision here. You've got people that are willing participants. You obviously have uh, a passion yourself in terms of doing it. Biggest challenge you're facing on this project? Um, is not looking at it as a whole. Ah. Um, that's, how, that's how it started out, is looking, looking at a, the big project as this instead yeah. of just this. You know what I mean? I'm mm -hmm. starting to be able to look at it like each little thing is just a little piece of the puzzle. Yep. And it's a much easier to decipher something when you look at it in that way. Pull discrete parts and make mm -hmm. those happen. Yeah. Well, great. Yeah. Teddy so, Mackey, we're just out of time. Uh, look forward to having you back as the months roll on. Yeah, be exciting. Get an update on your, on your yeah. project. Great. Thanks Thank you very, very much. much. Nice to have you here. Cool. Nice to have you. Well, next up, we're going to take a look at two clips from last year's Film Slam. Now, that's put on uh, annually by Midwest Media Artist Access Center. Now, the idea is to perform a brief excerpt from somebody's favorite film 
or to recreate a photograph. So let's watch. We're going to have two pieces. First, there's a scene from the color purple, and then a woman recreates apparently one of her favorite Cindy Sherman photos. This is live as they're performing it. things I love about him. I just love him. You still love him? I guess what you call a passion for him. If I was ever gonna marry a man, he'd have been it. But he's weak. Oh, gosh. I sure love him. You like sleeping with him? I have to confess I love him. Don't you? Times I pretend like I'm not even now. He don't know the difference. He never asked me how I feel. Just never asked me about anything at all. Just climbs on top of me and does his business. Does his does his business? You sound like he going on the toilet on you. That's what it feel like. Oh, Miss Celia, then you still a virgin? I guess so. Cause don't nobody love me. I love you. You think I ugly. No, I don't. You ugly. You sure is ugly. Mm-hmm. You still ugly. Oh, amen. <laughs> oh, Miss Celia, that was just something to sugar. Me being jealous of Albert and you. I think you's beautiful. With me is a gentleman who can actually tell us what it was we just saw. Randy Olson uh, heads up the Midwest Media Artist Access Center. Thanks, Randy, for being here. Thanks for having and me. And you've got uh, a, the second annual of an event. First of all, let's name the event. What okay. is it? The event is the Film Slam. And the idea of the Film Slam is to give film, photography, or anyone else a chance to get on stage for three minutes and sort of either recreate or go through and change their favorite or least favorite part of a film or photograph. Okay, and so what we just saw was actually from last year's, which was your first annual, mm -hmm. and I think we saw a, well, I know we saw a scene, a short scene from the movie, The Color Purple, and uh, the woman was doing, uh, I don't know if it was her favorite or her least favorite, Cindy Sherman photograph, I guess. Yes. So it's all kind of good-natured fun. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Now, before we forget, uh, when and where is the event? Okay, the event's going to be at Intermediate Arts, which is 28th and Lindale, and it's going to be December 18th at 7 p.m. Okay, and I know there's a phone number people can call if they want to find out more about that uh, film slam. Okay, yes, phone number is 651-644-1912. And the idea of the film slam is it's an event aimed at two audiences or two particular groups. It's aimed at the audience to come that night and have a lot of fun watching it. It's also aimed at performers that would like to call us at that number and book three minutes live on stage to have a rip at one of their favorite films or photos. That sounds like a lot of fun, and I think we have just enough time for you to rattle off a few of the categories. The categories are what made mm. this. They're great. Oh, yes. What we do is we choose people out of the audience that night to be judges, and we're judging in the following categories. Most complicated story told in the least amount of time, best foreign film in the original language, best ad-lib script, best performance from a musical, that one could be interesting, yeah. most accurate rendering of a still photograph, 
most fully justified full nudity. Nobody competed in that one last year. Most intriguing reading of an unfilmed script. Best framing of a still photograph. Most still, still. New ending of a well-known film, and of course, best of show. That sounds good. Nice mm -hmm. event. Yes. Randy Olson, thanks for being here. Thank you. Pleasure. Well, I'll be back to wrap the show right after a clip from Holidazzle. That's right. Holidazzle is coming up. Stay tuned. Well, it's hard to believe the holiday season starts this month. Holidayzle, first parade the day after Thanksgiving. A couple of things to mention here uh, coming up. Uh, the Minneapolis College of Art and Design is having their uh, student and recent alumni art sale that's coming up early in December, December 3rd and 4th. Uh, there's admission charge, and it's happening over at the College of Art and Design, South Minneapolis. And not too far from the College of Art and Design, uh, actually at the Minneapolis Institute of Arts, but it's a program of the Minnesota Artist Exhibition Program. I have a nice image here. It's their foot in the door exhibit and artists are invited to participate the catch is your work has to fit within one foot i believe those are all the dimensions uh deadline is the weekend of uh, december 9th through the 11th so you got to get your uh, ideas and your submissions in uh, to the minnesota artist exhibition program and earlier talking with jill bernard about comedy I got a press release here from stevie stevie ray's comedy troupe they've got a show coming up this holiday season y2k how the Glitch Stole Christmas. It's running most of the month of December. I think it opens the 9th, runs through the 31st down at the uh, Hennepin Center for the Arts in the Little Theater. Call Stevie Ray's for information on that. And I wanted to rattle off a few fun names of bands that are performing at the uh, Fine Line uh, Music Cafe in the Warehouse District. Uh, great names, Blitzhosen, Mezzanine Stair, Eddie Mack and Max Snow. They'll be performing later in the month. Happy New Day, Lost Marbles. Amy and Adams in Merseyside, and then some of my favorite, and I think these folks are earlier in the month, Rock and Bee, Two Left Feet, The Embellishment, The Splits, and Bison Burn. Just some of the names of the acts that are going to be down at the fine line. Good music, have a good time down there. Now next month on Artifacts, we're going to have more from the cultural cavalcade we call Minneapolis. We do have a hotline, so if you want to call and find out a little bit more about what we talked about and some of the guests, call 612-673-2234. And... Grab your pencils, your Crayolas, because we have a calendar of events at the end of the show. I'm Phil Lindsay. Hope you enjoyed Artifacts. We'll see you next time. Show 612-673-2234. Grab your pencils, because we always have a calendar of events. I'm Phil Lindsay. Hope you enjoyed Artifacts. We'll see you next time.
I know, I just thought I'd give it a shot. 